Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into today's video. So today's video is pretty exciting because we're going to be doing our first official spring nail set of 2024. And to be honest, we're kicking it off with something kind of extra and in your face, but you guys already know, like that's what i live for so as you can see we're going ahead and jumping straight into it my nails were already prepped off camera and if you guys would like to see more about my prepping i will make sure to leave a video in the cards above for you guys to go ahead and check out but i did go ahead and just glue on my nail tips using some base coat and now i'm just going over this with some more base coat because as you guys know i am working on top of a peel off base coat and the one i am using is in particular very sticky and kind of rubbery so it kind of pulls and stretches and i like to use this base coat for a little bit of added strength just so that once I go ahead and start shaping up these nails they don't immediately start popping off. Next I'm taking some tip cutters and I'm cutting them down just a little bit. We're actually going to be doing some pretty long almond nails today and after I have them cut down to my desired length I'm going to take some straight edge nail clippers and cut them into the almond shape. Next, I'm just going to file the shape nice and neat using my 80 80 grit nail file. So before I get into the acrylic application, I'm actually going to paint this medium blue onto my ring finger. And this is because I'm going to be doing an ombre, but I'm not necessarily going to be using a colored acrylic for this step. So I just like to use gel polish instead. And afterwards, I'm going over this with a layer of matte top coat. This is just going to help to protect the color. And I also feel like it helps to create a smoother ombre because of the silky finish of the matte top coat. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are now onto the acrylic application. And for today's application, I'm using some clear acrylic as well as McCart's Rose Petal and honestly I've been loving this acrylic so so much I've been using it in a lot of my more recent videos and to be honest this is probably one of my favorite acrylics that I've ever purchased especially when it comes to purchases I've made on Amazon to be honest when it comes to nude acrylics on Amazon there's only really like a few options that I can pick from and that's young nails and maybe Mia secret if I'm like really in a pinch but to be honest I haven't used Mia secrets nude acrylics in years and I don't plan on using them ever again i'm just not really a fan of the color choices like they're just not the greatest but i was really hoping to try this mccart acrylic because i wanted to see just how good it was and if you guys don't know when you go to the mccart's website they don't even sell poly gel anymore so i'm assuming that they're switching completely over to acrylic and i wanted to see just exactly how nice it was because i've seen so many people on instagram especially nail techs use it and kind of like rave about it and i'm not gonna lie i was a skeptic because i'm like this is mccart we're talking about like they focus more on gel products but it is really really good it definitely reminds me a lot of young nails acrylic but even with that being said i do feel like there are a few issues that i did encounter just from using it over the past few nail sets that i've shown on my youtube channel and that is that it lacks consistency and maybe that could be from the shipping process or whatever but i do feel like you have to like really mix this in every single time you use it otherwise i feel like the pigments don't blend together very nicely but but I will say that for the price, it's definitely worth the purchase. I bought the really huge like 
pound jar for only about $60. And I don't know, that's kind of a steal in my eyes. So I would definitely recommend trying it out, especially if you have trouble finding acrylics that are nice, if that makes sense, especially on Amazon, okay? Because while I love Valentino acrylics, I am sometimes in a pinch and I need to get my products as fast as possible. And unfortunately, they don't sell Valentino acrylics on Amazon. So yeah, I definitely do recommend giving it a try. But anyways, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but this is my real time for my application, which is why I'm moving so, so slow. This is my real time, not sped up at all. And as you can see, I move pretty, pretty slow. And that is because when it comes to the acrylic application, I like to make sure that everything is nice and perfect, or at least as perfect as I can get it, because the shaping process is just sometimes too much. Like sometimes I just feel like I could skip the shaping process and go straight to nail art because it's dusty. My hands are always cramping up and I just don't have time for it. So I like to make sure that my application is as smooth as I can get it or as perfect as I can get it. I mean, it's never really perfect, but it's close enough. <laughs> now, fortunately, the combination of acrylic powder and monomer that I use makes it so that I can actually move slow. But in the past, I have had situations where I've had to move so much more fast, especially when I was using like Mia Secret monomer, Mia Secret powders, and just other products that weren't necessarily, I guess, beginner friendly, if that makes sense. But now that I use my Young Nails monomer and this acrylic powder, I find that I have a lot more time to work with this acrylic. And again, this just makes it so I don't have to spend so much time shaping up these nails. But all of that to say, um, yeah, this is my real time. <laughs> That's really all that I wanted to say, but I went on the tangent as always. My apologies, I really do talk a lot sometimes. And when I watch these back, I'm like, girl, please shut up. <laughs> but anyways, while we are on the application, I wanted to ask you guys how you guys are feeling about the beginnings of spring. So I remember talking about this briefly last year when I did my yellow spring nail set. And I remember saying that typically when spring rolls around, I just feel very euphoric. Like, and I think one of the reasons for that is because of just some mental health issues that I kind of like deal with. In trigger warning, I will kind of just be touching briefly on mental health. So if you don't want to hear that, definitely do skip to the next timestamp that is below on the screen. But yeah, I normally feel very euphoric like during the beginning of spring. And that's normally because I deal with seasonal depression pretty much every single year. Like there's not a single period in time where in the winter I'm not depressed. <laughs> and I can laugh about it now because obviously I'm used to it. I've been dealing with this for years upon years as so many other people have been as well. But typically when spring rolls around, I just feel very good about life. And even if things necessarily aren't going great in my life, I do find myself, I guess, looking at the brighter side of everything, kind of finding the silver lining in different situations, especially in situations that I normally wouldn't find the silver lining in when we're talking about like December and like January. Unfortunately, seasonal depression has been just a part of my everyday life. And, you know, typically during the winter months, I'm just very depressed, anxiety ridden. I feel the need to isolate and it's just not a great time. But spring is here and I'm just feeling a lot better about life. And hopefully that means I can be a lot more consistent on YouTube. And also while I am here, I do want to mention that me being gone for two weeks was so unintentional it's not even funny so i actually got the flu not too long ago and that really threw me off my game like really bad but even prior to the flu i wasn't on my game anyway yeah the flu just made it really difficult for me to be productive and the first week i had the flu right and then the second week i was trying to get back on my feet because typically when i'm sick i you know obviously have a hard time eating i can't really function that well i'm kind of still recovering from having an illness right? So yeah, I definitely did not mean to be gone for two weeks. I literally think that this is the first video that I've made since March. So that's not great. <laughs> but hopefully with spring rolling around and with me being hopefully in better health, I can be more consistent with these spring nails and hopefully things can just be a lot better for my YouTube channel. As you guys know, I've struggled with consistency since the beginning of my YouTube channel. And I will say that that's because obviously, you know, there are other things in life that kind of catch up to me like a lot of 
different things that I have to deal with. And also because I'm a procrastinator and I just really suck at schedules and giving myself timelines. But this year, I will try and be better. So definitely do let me know which days you guys would like to see videos from me and also what times you guys would like to see videos from me. Because at the very least, I do try and upload at least one video every single week, maybe two if I'm feeling a little bit spiffy. And for the most part, you guys know I do upload at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I do think that I want to start moving forward uploading videos at 5 30 because i feel like you know most people are working nine to five and most people are like literally at work at 2 30 but again definitely do let me know which time you guys feel most comfortable with because i want to be able to make sure that i'm dropping videos when you guys have the chance to see them especially for those who kind of wait for me to upload and while i am saying that i do appreciate you guys just tuning in for every single one of my videos and just sticking through with me while i'm dealing with my bouts of inconsistency i wouldn't even call it a bout it's just literally me anyway but i will try and do better with my consistency it is currently sunday while i'm filming this i'm thinking of maybe filming on sundays and tuesdays but again definitely do let me know which days you guys would like to see videos from me and i will try and make that accommodation if that makes sense but anyways we are nearing the end of the application so i will just be quiet and let you guys watch the rest of it and of course we'll be back to shape and file these nails So the application is done and this is what everything is looking like. So now we're going to go ahead and start shaping up these nails and for that I just have my dust collector ready and I'm going to be shaping up these nails pretty much using my medium carbide bit for the entire process and I like to shape my almond nails as well as duck nails pretty much using a hand drill for the majority of the entire process and that's just because I find it to be a lot easier. So yeah, just going to go ahead and start shaping up these nails and I will come back in just a bit.
Next, I'm gonna go in with my 88 grit nail file just to help reinforce that almond nail shape. And to be honest, I don't have much to do, so I'm not gonna go overboard for this step. So the shaping is done and now we're going to go ahead and jump into today's nail art. But before I do anything, I'm just going to wipe off my nails using some isopropyl alcohol as always. So today's nail set is actually inspired by a nail set that I saw on Instagram. And when I first saw this nail set, I was a bit intimidated because it was a lot going on. And especially because of the flower, I wasn't exactly sure on how to approach this nail set. But I think in the end, it turned out really nice. So the first thing I did was lay out an assortment of different blues, as well as a mint green and a white onto my mixing plate. And I'm just going to start off by using this really dark blue to create a French tip on my pointer finger, as well as my middle finger. I also wanted to mention that the French tip on these two fingers are not going to be super deep and in my opinion I feel like a more rounded French tip just looks better for almond nails but that's just my personal opinion and if you are recreating this definitely feel free to make it look however you want it but me personally I'm not going to go super deep for today and I did make sure to do this in two layers because it is a bit sheer but if you are using something more opaque you won't have to do that Next up, we're gonna be creating an airbrush effect and I'm gonna be using a light blue for this part. And for this part, I am using the lightest blue that I have on my mixing plate. I'm gonna be creating the airbrush effect on my pinky as well as my middle finger. For my middle finger, it is gonna be a little bit different because it's gonna be more condensed and centered, whereas on my pinky, it's a little bit more sparse and like over the entire nail, if that makes sense. And that's because we're gonna be doing something a little bit later to kind of create a border around the airbrush on my middle finger. So I wanna leave a little bit of space for that. Also, I wanted to mention that a lot of you guys have been suggesting that I try blooming gel for the airbrush effect. And literally every single time I sit down to do nails, especially nail sets with the airbrush design, I literally just forget about that recommendation. So I didn't do it in this video, but maybe in my next video, I will try it out. And when I say my next video, I mean my next video with the airbrush effect. However, I am really debating on just buying the airbrush tool because this takes a very long time. And even though I feel like it looks pretty nice and I really do like the texturized look of it, it's just too time consuming and I don't really have time for that anymore. So I might just buy the tool and I won't have to find these workarounds for it anymore. However, I am a bit nervous about that because I do feel like they get jammed a lot. And I know a lot of people who have them do have issues with them because they get jammed so much. So I don't know, we will definitely see. So after I did the airbrush effect, I did go over it with a layer of base coat because I'm gonna be drawing on top of it and I wanna make sure that the surface is nice and smooth and now i'm gonna work on the french tip on my pinky nail this is kind of the exact same thing that i did on my pointer and my middle finger except there's going to be an open circle in the center so i want to make sure to leave that gap nice and open now for this part you definitely do want to make sure to take your time because even though it is a pretty large circle in the center you kind of have to make sure that everything is nice and symmetrical so definitely do take your time for this portion
so now i'm gonna do the same thing on my middle finger except there's actually gonna be not one not two but three circles on this nail there's going to be an open circle in the center and then there's going to be two smaller open circles on the side and this nail was of course very difficult so again make sure to take your time also if you feel like this will help i definitely do recommend using a smaller brush to draw the smaller circles but other than that just take your time hold your breath if you have to and everything will be fine now as a tip for you all i definitely do recommend making sure that the bottom of the circle is too low because we are going to be putting gems on the tip of the nail and you don't want that gap to be too small otherwise the gem won't fit but you guys will see what i'm talking about when we get there So now we're onto our ring finger and I'm just taking out some things I'm going to need for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over the snail with a layer of top coat because we're going to be using some iridescent chrome powder for the snail. And I'm going to go ahead and cure that for a full 30 seconds. Once that top coat is cured, I'm going to go ahead and start putting on this iridescent chrome powder. And for today, I decided to go for one that wasn't colored with any type of color. This is just a plain white chrome powder. In the reference photo, I do think that they used one that shifted yellow, but of course, feel free to use whatever you want for this step. And now we're going to get into the seashell effect for the snail. And for that, I'm just using a little bit of rhinestone glue and a medium liner brush. Now, this part is actually pretty simple, but very tedious. So, of course, as with every single other step in this nail set, do make sure to take your time. Now, as a little bit of a tip, I would definitely recommend letting the rhinestone glue kind of beat up towards the edge of the nail. And then you slowly drag it towards the center. So, with that being said, you kind of want to let it sit just a little bit before you start to move your brush so i would definitely say let it beat up for maybe about one to two seconds before you move your brush And now we're going to start gluing on some of these pearls and rhinestones. So in the reference photo, they have three little white pearls in the center of the pinky nail. And there's going to be a rhinestone at the very tip of this nail. And I'm just curing it in between using my little UV flashlight. And for my middle finger, it's going to be the opposite effect. So it's going to have three rhinestones towards the center of the nail and then the white pearl at the tip of the nail. And for my ring finger, there's going to be a white pearl in the center and two rhinestones on either side. So now we're on to the very fun and very hard part of the snail set. We're going to be doing the flower next. Now, I actually decided to use poly gel for this part because I don't have the like putty gel that people use for this. However, I will make sure to leave what I recommend using for this step in my description so that you guys won't have to suffer through like I did for this portion. So as you guys can see, I'm using a little bit of poly gel to sculpt the two bottom petals of this flower. And then afterwards, I decided to use another bead to sculpt 
the other three petals. And to kind of move this around, I am using a dotting tool, but I don't really know if that was the best option to be honest, but I made it work. And to be honest, I think for my first try, it looked pretty good. Now for this step, definitely do make sure that you have some alcohol on hand to provide you with a little bit of slip because this gets sticky very, very quickly because it's poly gel. But if you do have the correct product, like the putty gel, you won't have to worry about it getting sticky because it's just not really sticky. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and sculpt this flower. And then after I'm done, I cured it for a full 60 seconds. So after I finished the flower, I'm gonna start painting on the flower with this medium blue. And just as a little bit of a tip, as I've been providing like the entire video, make sure that you're not getting too close to the edge because the gel polish will kind of flood on its own. And you really don't want that gel polish to warp the shape of the flower because I actually had to go back in with the darker blue that I used for the French tip to kind of make it a little bit more crisp again. So definitely do be mindful of that. Now, after that first layer of blue is cured, I'm going in with a liner brush and I'm gonna be using that lighter blue as well as the sort of mint green color to create a little bit of dimension for this flower. Now, this part in particular isn't very neat and I really enjoyed the textured and stripy look that it gave it. And to finish off the flower, I'm gonna put a white pearl in the center. And I'm also going to be creating some water droplets on this nail using some rhinestone glue. Okay, so finally to finish off these four nails, I'm gonna go in with a layer of top coat. And of course I'm curing that for a full 60 seconds. Now you really wanna make sure to get every single nook and cranny, especially on that ring finger because it's so textured. But with that being said, don't go overboard and apply too much top coat or else it's gonna to blend together and you're gonna lose that texture. So as you can see, I did my thumbnail off camera and this is what everything is looking like. And to finish off this nail set, I'm gonna go in with some cuticle oil. And that completes today's set. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one. This nail set was definitely a really great start to my spring nails. And I'm super excited about what I am gonna do in the future. I don't exactly know yet, but this is definitely a great start. Of course, I would love to hear what you guys think of this nail set down in the comments. I love that flower nail so, so much. And I really do hope that in the future, I can find more nail sets with this flower design because I wanna do more. It was definitely very fun. But I'm thinking in the future, I will definitely get the putty gel because it was very difficult to do but it was definitely definitely worth it so of course do let me know if you would wear this nail set for the spring i definitely feel like it's a more subtle spring nail set because without that pointer finger you probably wouldn't even be able to tell but even still i feel like this nail set is a win it's very subtle unique and very fun as for my next nail set it would definitely be spring related but it's going to be a lot more simple so if you are looking for more simple spring nail designs definitely do stay tuned for that. Also, just as a little bit of a reminder, definitely do let me know which days you guys would like to see videos from me. And again, I will try and make that accommodation so that I can stay more consistent and get these spring nails out for you guys. But as always, I want to say thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today and I will see you guys in the next one.